Just a quick word on the completely unrelated uh, 3D printer before I get to actually rewiring it. So there is one thing that I want to stress on the Prusai 3 Mark III that I'm working on. It's uh, one of the original units that shipped out that I got back when they first announced them. It took me a long time to build it, but that's beside the point. So they may have made some uh, mitigations for the problem of the heat bed cabling coming off as I'm showing here and as I'm repairing on the printer. So this might only apply to earlier ones. Maybe not. You'd have to go look at the Prusa forms or ask them if they change anything or take a look at their, their diagrams. In any case, uh, it'll be useful to show what it's currently got, what I'm changing out, how I'm doing it, and hopefully it'll help you out. On with the show. And we're back at the Prusa i3 Mark III to fix this thing, finally. What I'm doing is putting on a bunch of stranded wires. Instead of one cable, I'm going with four 20 gauge. Hopefully that provides it a bit more redundancy on the wire. What I found on the other one was that the cable was actually starting to green up and corrode. Heat this thing up. It looked like it just flat out failed and broke due to the corrosion. And that was that. Yeah, and there was some um, there was some solder it looked like or some flux still in the cable. These won't have that problem. And uh, these are actually rated cables. They've got I don't know if they you definitely won't be able to see that, but you definitely can't see it, but they're 20 gauge and they're PVC coated and they're rated. Unlike the other ones, which didn't have any writing on them at all, which honestly always makes me a little suspicious with cabling. I'm going to pre-tin these a little bit. These are rated up to 80 degrees Celsius, 600 volts. They should handle this load just fine. And now I'm back with the glove, and hopefully this will go a little easier. And put that up there in case I need it. Yep, that's hot. Clean that off while it's still warm. All right, success on that side. Those are all nicely soldered. Okay, now I need to go cut some black cables back in a minute, and then I'll solder it all up for the, hopefully, last time. All right, so I've got the Insta crimp on, and I've got the other cable prepared to solder up. I don't recommend these, they're kind of crappy, and the crimper isn't so hot either, but, but it's what I have, and it'll work. If you're doing anything like this, you need to actually go check the gauge on the cables, make sure it's proper for what the application is. For this, I'm pretty sure I'm using the right gauge cables and right, <clears throat> right connectors, but I couldn't swear to it. And I'll be keeping an eye on it to make sure it doesn't fail like it already did, I suppose. So, worst that could happen is it stops working again. Fortunately, the purse actually has pretty good coverage for that sort of thing in the firmware. It stops operating the temperature if it senses that there's no electricity going anywhere. So throwing a fault on that helps. Let's try to get this as close to the base as possible. There, seems well fused. Solder joint looks a little crappy, but kept the heat on too long. It'll do. Clean off the joint again on this side. Cables are relatively clean. All right, looks pretty good. No stray cables sticking out, all soldered down. Healthy amount of solder back on there. Now to clean this mess up, hook it back up, 
and see if it's working. All right, as you can see, she's back in one piece again. So now time for the moment of truth to see if this thing actually fires up and works. There's a good sign, it's powering up. Now let's see what the print bed will give us. Temperature, bed, and a nice solid 50 degrees Celsius. Oh, and the light is on. Let's see. It works. All right. And there you go. Well, hopefully you got something out of that. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe in the links below. And uh, if you ever want to see anything in the ProSci 3, let me know. I can always do a video on any of the oddball repairs I've done or replacements that I haven't actually shot a video on so far. I might even have one for it. I do have a bunch of stuff I haven't published. So, thanks for watching. Till next time.